Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I got a really great one for you. A lot of you who are coming here time and time again know that one of my main goals in life is to be able to retire early. And you might be wondering, well, what am I doing in order to foster that? How am I going to achieve that? And really right now, there are five main things that I'm doing in order to foster an early retirement. So in this video, I wanna talk about exactly the steps that I'm taking, what I'm looking to do to uh, sort of aid the process in the future. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, now listen, if you guys are brand new to this channel, just coming here for the first time, well, I wanna say welcome. My name is Dalton, this is DLITS TV, and hey, on this channel, we talk about all things investing. Right now, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. It would really mean a lot if you guys stuck around. Hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. But uh, I just wanna jump in to uh, the first thing that I'm doing to foster early retirement. And this is actually a quote from Dave Ramsey himself. He's a financial guru. I really look up to him. He says the quote, live like no one else, so that one day you can live like no one else. And uh, this is a really powerful quote that I hold uh, near and dear to me because it really resonates to me on so many different levels. The way that I interpret this is more of a lifestyle and savings aspect. So if you look at lifestyle and savings, what do I mean by that? Well, how are you spending your money? Are you building yourself a deeper financial hole? Are you going into debt? Are you buying new things? For example, when I graduated college, uh, one of the first things I did was get an apartment. And this actually was the first lifestyle choice that I made that I actually don't agree with now. I should have moved back home with a parent who was willing to take me in. My mom was there for me. She was able to uh, you know, put me up in housing and probably honestly wouldn't have charged me for rent. Right now, it, what I'm doing is currently living at my girlfriend's house with her mother paying a very small amount in rent. But that first year out of college, I basically threw out twelve to $14,000 in rent and expenses for no reason whatsoever. I could have used that money to uh, actually foster a down payment on a house, which is what I'm currently working at doing to uh, further build wealth in the future. I wanna really buy some real estate, get some rental properties going. But uh, more lifestyle things that come into play, it's not just necessarily living with a parent, what else can you do? Well, when you're looking at uh, buying new things, right? People uh, often, what I saw, my friends would graduate, they'd buy brand new cars, buy all these really nice things, still have student loans, and uh, that's just never something that uh, had any interest to me, right? I think that's more for the uh, later portion in life. If I'm able to build enough wealth where I don't need to buy an eye at uh, purchasing a new car or making some of these less essential upgrades, uh, that's the time for me to do it. Not right now where I'm trying to build wealth and be able to retire early. And I think, uh, you know, I, I use the term retirement. I don't really feel like I'll ever be uh, satisfied retiring and doing nothing. I think I'm always going to work. But uh, for me, the term is more financial freedom. If I have enough incoming that uh, it pays for all of the expenses, then that way I can live financially free. That's more of my goal. It's not necessarily necessarily just retiring, sitting on the beach, drinking alcohol, doing nothing. It's really just taking that extra step and, and being able to generate enough income where if something were to happen and I couldn't work, it wouldn't be something to stress about. And so other savings things that I'm doing is like a lot of my friends, for example, would go out on every weekend, they'd go to bars, they'd rack up these huge bar tabs, which would always honestly make me sick. And then the next day you're hungover, you're feeling like pretty crappy and you just pissed away around $200 on a bar that uh, honestly you could have just saved that money and helped build more wealth. And you know, at, at first glance you might look at it and you're like, wow, this isn't a, a terrible expense, but it really starts to add up as you do this time and time again. That that $200 night turns into uh, every month, you know, six, $800. And it's like, where's your money going at that point? The way I view money right now is if I'm spending money, is this something that's going to actually grow money? Is this money gonna work for me? Uh, something we'll talk about in the next step here. All right, so topic number two, this is my personal favorite. This is investing your money. This is the main way that I have my money actually working for me. Uh, basically, if you don't know anything about investing, you put your money into the stock market, you invest in these companies that you uh, firmly believe in for the future. And uh, for me, I actually take the dividend route where I invest in dividend paying companies. And these companies actually pay you a portion of the profits to reward you for investing in them. And a lot of times you go after these big name blue chip companies and uh, it's just another form of income on the side. Now, there are ways that you can invest in ETFs. 
that are going to give you on average around an 8% return annually on the stock market. Now, this is way higher than inflation. It's a really solid option to actually put your money in order to uh, make more money. So the way that I've structured my finances is I have an emergency fund established. It's about six months of my living expenses. If I were to lose my job, everything were to go kaput, I would at least be able to live off of that for six months. Everything else I pretty much invest. I invest in a Roth IRA, I invest in a 401k, and I also have individual retirement accounts. Now, you're gonna wanna know the difference between uh, all of these. I would first recommend probably looking into uh, your company's 401k match. If you guys have a 401k, uh, if you're working a nine to five job, you have a W-2, uh, it's likely that you could have a 401k, an employer sponsored one where they'll match your investments up to a certain percentage. If not, if you're above the age of 18, you're looking to open an account, a Roth IRA is a really solid option. Now, the reason being is because you get a lot of tax benefits. The money that you put into the account is going to grow tax-free, and that way when you retire at the age of 59 and a half, you can take out all of the money completely tax-free. Now, other ways you guys can invest is uh, into stuff like crypto currency. It's a bit more speculative. You definitely want to make sure you understand the space. I recently put a thousand dollars in, put out a video on that if you guys want to check that out. But uh, crypto is another way that I'm diversifying my investments. And then another thing that I'm trying to do actively is pursue real estate. And uh, one thing about real estate, which leads me into the third thing that I'm doing to try and foster early retirement. And that's uh, a topic known as geo arbitrage. And if you have no idea what the topic is, you've never heard of it before. Well, it's a rather simple concept. You see, geo arbitrage is basically moving from one location where you have a high cost of living and then going to a lower cost of living area. So you guys might notice that right now I'm not in my typical office set. I'm actually looking for uh, potentially buying property in other states. And I decided that now was a good time to start looking. And, uh, and basically I came out to Virginia right now is where I'm at. I'm just considering, you know, looking at different areas that might make sense in the future that have a lower cost of living than my current uh, residency. Now you might be wondering where I'm living. Uh, normally it's uh, the Northeast Seacoast area, super expensive, $300,000 could uh, get you a shoe box there if you're lucky. You're not gonna find much. Uh, the real estate market there is very, competitive people are buying cash I know it's competitive in a lot of different places but there are so many areas that have a lower cost of living that I don't want to ultimately rule out um, and I really don't know where I'm comfortable with living so at first you know it's really important to go and give these places a trial run that's why I'm sitting in this different space here and uh, another thing that just actually ties back into number one living like no one else uh, a lot of times people will take these vacations to check out these new areas or do these different things you guys can see over here this is actually my office setup instead of taking taking vacation time instead of uh, losing out on money that way. What I've done is uh, working remotely right now. It makes sense to you know come check out these areas after work. I can get this done nine to five, record a YouTube video, go check out the area, do all the things I need to do. And that's just one of the things that right now is what I'm working on. I really wanna figure out you know what makes sense for me, where I might wanna live. And so geo arbitrage is a really important concept to me. All right, now the fourth thing that I'm doing to uh, foster that early retirement is actually uh, starting a side hustle, right? This has been so detrimental towards building my uh, wealth, towards building more income, and uh, really further establishing myself financially. Now, what was happening was I started YouTube around two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, and uh, for about a year and a half, I didn't make a single dollar from YouTube. And things started to slowly ramp up, and now it's been much more quickly. Uh, Hopefully one day, you know, I'll be able to do some of this YouTube stuff full time. But uh, until then, it's a really great way to just add on to my income. And maybe, uh, maybe if I wasn't doing YouTube with all the free time I have, I'd actually take on a second job instead. If I couldn't think of a side hustle that was feasible for me, or maybe I just wanted to make some uh, extra income while I thought of a side hustle that would work out, well then I would definitely be taking on a second job, maybe working nights, maybe work some weekends. And it's just about valuing your time because you see, I, I know that I have a really far out frame of mind. When you look at my investing, it's a very long-term mindset. When you look at my financial goals, it's more of a long-time mindset. People my age, you know, 24 years old, they don't really think about what's gonna happen 10 years from now, let alone, uh, you know, a year from now even. Uh, so it's really important that if you can kind of get that mindset down when you're young enough, it becomes infinitely easier to build wealth. There are some people out there that really, they don't even start investing. They don't really even hear about it till they're 50. 60 years old and uh 
off the bat, you can be at such an advantage if you just have that knowledge up front and you understand the powers of investing and the difference it can make. Because these people at 50, 60 years old, they can still get it down, right? And they're they're much older than somebody like me. So uh, when you're investing, one of the best things is the time on your side. So being young, having the right mindset, it makes such a big difference for you. And so every dollar that I'm making that's extra, Pretty much what I was doing was reinvesting it back into the business to try and grow more revenue. And uh, now I'm at the point where I can finally start putting away some of that revenue and potentially using it to build more wealth and hopefully one day again, take this over, make it a full-time job and be able to make videos like this from wherever I want and share this message and, and inspire more people to save and invest and build the financial freedom. Now that actually rolls right into topic number five here that I'm doing to help build wealth. And that is really just understanding where you're at, putting things into perspective. Now that's that long-term mindset that I already discussed. I kind of jumped the gun with that. It's really under understanding, you know, wealth doesn't happen overnight. I see so many people come to this channel expecting to make a ton of money within a month, within a week, you know, uh, maybe even within a year. That is not what my goal is. I know that I, I can't really achieve that unless I were to get extremely lucky, you know, win the lottery, which I don't play the lottery. Uh, so the chances of that happening, extremely slim. But uh, if you guys want to throw some lottery tickets my way, hey, I'll accept them. Uh, but anyways, like I'm saying here is it's just understanding where you're at in life, understanding how long this is going to take. You know, maybe five years from now is something that's not realistic for me. But if I grind, if I'm doing this YouTube stuff, if I'm working 10 years from now, who knows? Do I have enough money to uh, be financially free? Will I have enough money incoming from, you know, investments, other ways that I'm generating money to be able to uh, quit my job and, and not have the stress of needing to work a nine to five? I mean, maybe we'll see what happens. I truly believe in myself and I believe in my capabilities to get there. And I know that there are so many other people that would benefit from seeing something like this that can get there too. And I want to take as many people as I can with me. So if, uh, if I've inspired you in any way, or you guys just like the general message, it would really mean a lot. If you click that like button, turn it blue, uh, helps promote this channel, get it out on other YouTube homepages so more people can see. Thank you so much for checking out this video and have a great day.